going on and happy holidays Hot Ones fans. This is Sean Evans checking in from the Museum of Curiosities. We have a very exciting holiday extravaganza for you today. The stocking full of questions, a special guest addressing the Hot Ones controversies of season seven and speaking of the Bill Burr wing number nine controversy. Did he eat the wing? Did he not eat the wing? The answer is he ate the wing. To pull back the curtain on the show, one way in which we get super clever in the editing is by speeding up people eating. If you just hear somebody chomping on a wing for more than three Mississippi, it is an automatic vibe killer. And then sometimes it's a chaotic scene and Bill Burr's wing eight is a prime example. He's fighting to bomb, he's taking laps all over the place and afterwards the set was a mess. We needed to refill waters, refill milks, swap in new napkins and amidst all that chaos, Bill starts snacking on his number nine wing. We have a choice there. We can keep it all in, untangle all the wires involved, stretch out this episode that's already 27, 28 minutes long and put another three, four minutes on it. But if it's not that big a payoff, then it's not worth doing because in 2018, this internet age, people have the attention span of a gnat. In order to keep it streamlined, in order to keep it fast, we just lop it off sometimes. Another topic that came up frequently, and it comes up frequently every year, but I'm happy to address it, is Nibblegate. The nibblers, they're nibbling. Now look, I am never going to be a chicken wing referee. The second that that happens is the second that Hot Ones ceases to exist. But here, I understand what you're saying. I want guests to commit to the wings, at least try to go there, whatever that means for them but we're already putting them in a pretty vulnerable situation where they're eating spicy wings for the internet's amusement. I think it would be A, super lame to hit them over the head with all these house rules right when they walk in and then over the course of the interview, police them and wrist slap them because they're not eating enough of the chicken wing. We have guests that are approaching 70 years old. We have guests with medical issues. No one needs to kill themselves eating chicken wings for the internet's amusement. The only people you can really get mad at are the ones who just walk. So if someone's not reacting, not feeling, being like this is easy and they're nibbling, that to me is kind of lame. But if somebody is just dying in their struggle city and they're taking smaller bites, that to me, not a big deal even a little bit. All right, now that we've addressed the major complaints, it is time for your hard-hitting Hot Ones fan questions. Chris Schoenberger, bring me the stocking of questions. Thank you very much. And now we reach into the stocking, and the first question comes from, Feel Me Once asks, what are some of your favorite types of questions to ask? After all the research you do, how do you narrow the questions down to 10? Well, you always like the questions that kind of break the guess when they're taken aback or delighted by a question or wonder how you know it. That's always a good thing. That means you cracked it on some level. And then when it comes to the research, what we do is we come up with 20 topics, let's say, over the course of the research. And then when we're masterminding the interview, we'll narrow it down to 10. And you're always editing that as you go. So it all just depends on the guest. It's always a choose your own adventure that kind of shapes itself as the interview goes on. Okay. Up next, we have Jean-Philippe asks, what's the biggest misconception you think people have about Hot Ones? Well, I think that as this show has grown, people think that it's some big machine, that we have a big staff. Like, we don't. It's the same six or seven people that we had in the beginning working through it now. People are like, they have a team of researchers. They have writers. No, we don't. Me and Chris have written every run of show since the beginning and we will do it till the end. We'll see this thing through exactly how we wanna see it and uh, it's still the small shop circus sideshow that it's always been. Uh, another misconception, you know, people on the internet always think people are high when they're getting interviewed or they're interviewing. Like, they're, they're high, they're definitely high. Or like they say, Sean's high. I, listen, I'll, I'm forthcoming about it, I'm, I'm honest. I like an edible, I like a vape. I've talked about this many times, but you cannot run point guard 
on an interview talk show high. Like, this show has not been done high. I've never been high for an interview. Maybe my, like, my look is just naturally sunken a little bit. People are eating scorching hot chicken wings. Maybe their eyes become bloodshot at some point. But people are not high as much as people on the internet think that the people who are on shows are high. Like, that's a ridiculous thing. And then another thing is I think, like, every time a guy and girl have been in an interview setting, it's always like, they definitely boned. People are always like, they hooked up. Oh, yeah, they hooked up. That doesn't happen either. So I think that there's a lot less sex and a lot less drugs in your YouTube web series than you might think. So those are the misconceptions. (laughs) Joy Joy says... Can you tell the fans some fun facts about the other members of your team who help make hot ones every week? I'd be happy to. Bill, behind the camera, you've gotten to know a little bit, and he's layered. He's an onion. It's just nonstop with that guy. Most interesting man in the world. Dom, producer Dom, she is a Friends obsessive. When we're on the road, she watches 28 Hours of Friends. Steven, Steven loves Arby's and gadgets. He likes little gadgets so that he can play with lights and play with different things. He loves gadgets. Sarah Honda, hip hop roots go way back, used to manage Gangstar and MOP. I love that. Chris Schoenberger is obsessed with nachos. In fact, he used to have a blog called Nacho Hunters where him and his brother would travel around trying to find the greatest nachos in the world. So that's a fun fact. And then, uh, Our editor, Colin, used to put together Hot Ones meme videos, including Hot Ones Tyra Banks, but Sean's a serial killer, and now he's actually editing the show. So you can do anything if you put your mind to it. Mari, she's a new mom. She just had a baby and remodeled her home, and it looks gorgeous there in upstate New York. Such a woods cottage if I've ever seen one. Kristen Price, big Killing Eve fan, will not stop talking about that show. I've never watched a single second of it, but she's into it, so check it out. All right, up next. Have you consulted with a physician to discuss the impact on your health of eating really hot chicken way too often? Well, Mr. Brown, I appreciate you checking in on me, and you'll be happy to know that I recently went to a physician, and I told them I need a full report. Hook me up to everything. Get the blood work. I need to know everything that's going on because in a very prolific way, I've been eating some of the hottest chicken wings on planet Earth, Carolina Reapers, the works over the last three years, and I might only have six months to live. So let's figure this out. I nervously await the test results, and guess what? They come back, and I am smack dab in the middle of the range on every single measurable. I am like an Olympic athlete with my health. Perhaps these chicken wings are making me stronger. My doctor was on the phone, and they're like, your vitamin D is a little bit low, but other than that, these are just spectacular numbers. So I don't know if it's hot ones to think. I don't know if I was just touched by the hand of God. But either way, season eight, I'm ready for you and it should be no problem. Well, all right, there we are. The stocking is empty, but the gifts on the Hot Ones holiday extravaganza just keep on coming. In anticipation of tomorrow's Christmas Day games on ESPN and ABC, I sat down with an NBA legend to break down the game film from some of our past NBA player guests. Roll it! Welcome to the Hot Ones Holiday Set, where we're joined by NBA Countdown's Jalen Rose. You know him from his run with the Fab Five, his storied 13-year career in the NBA, as well as Get Up and Jalen and Jacoby on ESPN, and we'll get into tomorrow's games in just a second. But before we do, I need the backstory on your 1994 draft day fit, because in the (laughs) spirit of the holidays, it is quite Christmassy. It is. And so I had two suits that I was able to go get. One of them was this lovely red and white masterpiece that either people think it's the best of all time or the worst of all times but either way i'm proud because it's detroit 
Well, one of the reasons we're really excited to have you in this seat is because we need an expert analyst to look at the tail of the tape from some of the NBA players we've had take on the wings of death. And we'll start with our most recent season and Blake Griffin, who had some interesting thoughts <laughs> on how the internet has impacted the slam dunk contest. So I'll just play the clip for you and you tell me what you think, okay? <laughs> Do you think it's harder to impress people these days? Yeah, a little bit. I mean, but it's also cool because like there's guys that aren't in the NBA who maybe aren't even playing overseas who are unbelievable dunkers. So, you know, you get to see these like dunk highlights all the time. So yeah, maybe the dunk contest is taking a little bit of a hit, but overall in terms of like the the scope of dunk. The consumer, you get to we're see, spoiled. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. So it's it's great for basketball, it's great for the dunk fan, but maybe not the dunk contest. I don't think we've been desensitized to it. I think what has happened is become too many props, and it's too many missed dunks. And the other thing is the elite superstar level players aren't participating. Like, I would have never thought that LeBron James would play 16 years and never be in the dunk contest. So when that happens, that takes a little away from it as well. I have another clip for you. As somebody who went from a player and became a member of the sports media press, I'm curious what you think about Kevin Durant's comments from his Hot Ones interview. What would you do differently as a member of the sports press? Well, I'm going to be all about the players. I'm going to be all about the players. All about what they want to do. They're pro we're the product. We're, we're pushing the league. The players are pushing the league. So it should always be about the players. Oh, sorry. That's what you say, but why are you playing? Like, once you have a job, and it is to analyze what you see and have a colorful opinion about it, if a guy had a terrible game with nine turnovers, you can't be like, oh, well, we went to the same college. You know, he's a great guy and, you know, whatever. You have to, like, what make you good is to be able to articulate what you see. And in my opinion, this is what I try to do without name calling and or without making it personal, which there are a lot of media members that do that. And then you've covered the NBA for a long time. You're also a prolific podcaster. And here at Hot Ones, we always have our eyes out. You know, which player would make an amazing guest? Who do you think is the best interview in the NBA right now? I mean, you got the masters of the obvious, like the LeBron James of the world or Steph Curry type of elite level players. But I like um, elite level players that also are going to be unfiltered. Draymond Green comes to mind, Russell Westbrook comes to mind. It's guys that do a really good job of balancing being a player, but also having a personality with the media. All right, well, Jalen, it's been a pleasure. I can't wait to put on my sweats, curl up, and watch 12 consecutive hours of basketball tomorrow. Any final thoughts on tomorrow's games? Whatever you saw me wearing on draft day, I'm going to be 100% more clean tomorrow, <laughs> I promise you. Well, that's a wrap from the Museum of Curiosities. Thank you so much for tuning in, and happy holidays, Spice Lords. We really appreciate you rocking with us through seven seasons, 130 plus episodes, and beyond. We're going to be very quick on the off season, starting up the Hot Ones train in January. So just opening up some Christmas presents, popping a hot chocolate, and then it's right back to the studio. Thank you for rocking with us through season one, season two, season three, season four, season five, season six, season seven, and season eight. Roll the montage. Hey, what's going on, everybody? For First We Feast, I'm Sean Evans, and you're watching Hot Ones. It's the show with hot questions and even hotter guests. Guests. Sexy hot, not like temperately, like sexual. I have been hearing on Twitter for so long, when are you gonna do Hot Ones? How are you guys with spicy food? You crank it up a little bit? I like it a spice. I crank it. Bro, I'm nervous now, man. I don't really think about what I'm getting myself into, bro. Never had hot sauce in my life. In your entire life? Ever. I'm excited, that's why I wanted to do it. Let's do that shit. Uh, oh yeah, it's kicking in. Mm -hmm. Oh, just as long as it gets no hotter than this. Oof. There shouldn't be any issues whatsoever. That one's hot. I think milk is a coward. I think that's a cowardly move. Then I think smile. ISIS wins <laughs> if you go for the milk. And the foodie uh, You went milk! I know I did. All right, I'm going milk. I gotta go milk. <laughs> And the foodie revolution is infiltrated. Oh, it's so gross. It's room temperature. Who does that to somebody? Well, but just so I know, where is the closest washer? There's one in the green room. Is it soundproof? Came up in this place. I was really, really front. But that shit right there got me fucking bugging. That shit right there really for the public. Oh my god!
I think I'm crying, actually. Are my ears bleeding? Are we good? It's all mental. It's that time, boys. Wait a second. What are you, why, why are you, you shaking? shaking? This is the last dab. We call it the last dab because it's tradition around here to put a little extra on the last wing. Just a good, strong, healthy coating. But it's optional, right? You don't have to if you don't want Why to. would I want to? Oh, uh, I know that talk. You don't have to, you fucking pussy. All right, cheers. Cheers, what a trip it's been, Pete. What a wild trip it's been. I dabbed. The dip, the dab. <laughs> I'm the bike. I gotta walk it off. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. I gotta Take walk it off. Take a lap, Bill. Oh my God. Dude, that's the hottest fucking thing I've ever ate. Are you dying? I'm dying. I'm dying. Oh my God. I'm uh, trying to pull it together really, really hard, but it's not working. You found it deep in the nutsack. Ah. Found that rocket oh. sauce. And now there's nothing left to do but roll out the red Victory, carpet for you show guys. Me mine. This camera, this camera, and this camera. Let the people know what you have going on in your life. Oh, well, um, I corrected a botched circumcision from many years ago. Oh, in terms of plugs? 